Didn't hear me. <laughs> this here, my friends, is the Zhuin Crane 4. Now, this one is the brand new gimbal, obviously, by Zhuin, and this is the rig that I threw on top of it. Look at it monitor, V mount battery, full cage. This thing is heavy. We're going to be weighing this as well, see what it weighs. So, we're going to be talking about the pros, the cons, and all the things that you get from this gimbal. And obviously, is it worth your money? So, let's get into the video. So the Crane 4 is the newest gimbal by Zhuin. It has a 10 watt fill light, which goes from 2700 Kelvin to 5500 Kelvin. It has your standard landscape mounting or quick portrait mode mounting options. It has a balance indicator light on the side, an adjustable wrist rest, adjustable sling grip. You can pair your camera through Bluetooth or hardwire through USB-C. It has a color touch screen of 1.22 inches. It's USB-C charging with a runtime of 12 hours. And you can customize the trigger button and front dial to your liking. And it's currently 669 US for the Crane 4 or 749 for the Crane 4 combo. So you're probably thinking, it's another one in a full saturated market of gimbals, why would I need the Crane 4? So we're going to be deep diving into what makes this thing special and obviously the pros and cons and all those kind of things. But uh, right from the bat, they've designed this for, I guess, videographers, cinematographers, whoever you want to call yourself, content creators, uh, for larger cameras. So not just your smaller uh, Sony Alpha cameras and Canon mirrorless cameras, but the larger ones like, you know, your larger fx6 the red cameras uh, canon c70s the z cams larger setups it has so much more power in the motors that's probably one of the biggest impressive things and that's why i built this rig just to test it i would never fly something like this but i mean you could you could literally leave the monitor directly on top and balance it and it works perfectly fine now i also want to talk about the setups that i've tried on this because i've tried a couple of different setups uh, to try and find the way to try my fx6 and rigged out my fx30 but uh the fx6 we'll talk about at the end because i did have to try and balance it in a few different ways uh, because the fx6 itself is actually quite light but we'll talk about that later so check this out i had to get a little bit creative with this one because i actually don't have a camera that's that heavy like the fx6 is big it's awkward it's not really heavy at all but got a monitor on top vmap battery on the side nd filter on the front and <laughs> look at that it handles the weight absolutely no problems the one thing i did have to do though is mount this on the sides so i had to get a little bit creative with how i mounted it because on the base it wouldn't go low enough and uh yeah just mounted on the side. I think that's probably one of the great things about this is that you do have that versatility when it comes to mounting this and there's a few different ways and options that you can mount this. You just got to get creative. But uh, the weight, it handles it perfectly fine, but <laughs> my arms are burning utilizing this. I think the great thing about that is that palm rest. It definitely does take a lot of the weight, but still, man, you get a forearm burn. <laughs> I would not like to use that all day, that's for sure. Put it in here, 3.36, 3.36 kilos. Oh, I'll show you guys. Take this, there we go. One of the standout features that comes with a lot of the Zhuin newest gimbals is that little light on the front. Now this is a 10 watt light. It goes from, I think 2700 Kelvin to 5500 Kelvin in temperature. And you know, it's relatively strong. It's not bad for a little bit of a fill light, an eye catch light, but you know, it does get the job done. Depends on what you actually need it for. Now also talking about the design, it does have this telescopic handle on the side here, which you can obviously attach or detach. And it does come with that combo kit. Now the great thing is you can adjust the length, you know, make it longer, shorter and swivel it. So there is a little bit of adjustability to suit your shooting style. Now they do have that 1.22 inch touchscreen, which is color, which is a nice touch. It doesn't have to be color, but it is nice and bright and you can actually use it during the day. It's perfectly fine. Touchscreen is very responsive. It's just how it should be essentially. And it just allows you to go through the functions and menus a little bit easier than, you know, obviously pressing physical buttons. 
Now this gimbal does seem to have a little more features than some others. It's got panorama mode, which you can pretty much do a three by three or a full 180 degree panorama, or you can even customize it as well. You've got your time-lapse mode, or your motion lapse, which you can pretty much just make a moving time lapse, or V mode, which essentially is just like an automatic vortex mode. Now, one thing to note as well is that with their recent gimbals, you can't actually take the batteries out, whereas the Crane 3S, you could actually take the batteries out and recharge, which personally, I didn't like because the gimbal's gonna last, this one is rated up to 12 hours, so you shouldn't really need to recharge it during a shoot unless you've got a ridiculously long shoot and you're literally leaving this on the whole day so 12 hours should be absolutely plenty plus the great thing is that this is a USB-C cord so if you do want to power it just power it with an external source you know plug it directly in and you can actually charge it now they did actually add this indicator light right here so this is essentially what's called a balance indicator light so it'll actually tell you when it's not balanced comes up with a red light but doesn't work on one and they actually emailed me they're like okay yours doesn't work it would need to be updated but you can't update yours so that sucks i can't update mine it doesn't work but apparently if it is out of balance the red light will pop up and also you can go into the touch screen and see the balance and literally see which axis is out of balance and then rebalance it and reconfigure it and you obviously don't want to be utilizing the gimbal when it's out of balance because it will be overworking the motors even though the motors seem very strong on this one now the one thing that will actually throw the balance off on your gimbal is a zoom lens now a very common practice to do when you're actually utilizing zoom lenses on a gimbal like this is that you find out the longest distance that your lens actually extends then bring it back to about 50 percent and then balance your bit gimbal with that so you know i've got the tamron 28 to 75 so i'll zoom it all out to 75 find out how much it actually extends from the barrel bring it back 50 percent and then it looks like about 50 mil and then i'll actually balance it there and you're obviously going to get better longevity out of your gimbals if you're not overworking your motors all the time when it's you know out of balance so when it comes to stability out of all these gimbals, I mean, they're all going to be relatively the same in terms of the algorithm, in terms of, you know, getting steady footage, you should be able to get extremely steady footage with pretty much any gimbal, especially if it is a good quality gimbal. And this is a good quality gimbal. But one thing you do need to go into is into the settings where it says parameter settings. And essentially you're going to be just sort of adjusting the speed of your dead band, uh, joystick speed, follow speed, how smooth you actually want it. And you can pretty much adjust the motor torque as well so if, if you've got a really heavy setup you could put it onto high torque and essentially it's not going to give you any sort of weird bouncing motions or weird vibrations you do need to do this before every time you have a brand new setup on this now i didn't do that to the best of my ability before the current running shoot that you guys have just seen it came out really bouncy the the motor was actually on medium i probably should have put it to high there's just a whole bunch of different settings that I should have changed before this shoot, which I didn't. And that's uh, obviously you've got to learn the hard way. And I just completely forgot. I do it to every gimbal uh, that I get, but uh, completely forgot because this was a really heavy setup and I forgot to tune that. So make sure you do that. Now, other than that, what is it that I don't like about this? And it actually comes down to this control arm. It's just not long enough. Whereas the Crane 3S... See how long this control arm is? It is so much longer, which actually allows the camera to be further away from this back. So if you are underslinging, it's not gonna hit the back, especially if you do have a V-mount battery, uh, it's going to be poking out the back. And usually what I do is I actually have my FX6 fully built out with a V-mount battery and the Crane 3S takes it no problems. But this one can take the weight. The control arm just isn't long enough to be able to support the FX6. And that is obviously if you do have a larger lens setup. So this is with the 24 to 105 lens. And I've got a V-mount battery on the back. So this is a 148 watt hour V-mount battery. Uh, and it just doesn't fit because the V-mount battery hits. Even if I put a smaller 98 watt hour V-mount battery on the back, it will still hit. But if anything, that's probably too light, which would mean I'd have to actually go even further back. So the FX6 is just such a very strange setup. You would have to use its standard Sony battery and then just really mount it as far back as physically possible. 
Now, the last one is a gripe that I have with a lot of gimbals, and I, uh, I don't like it. These arms are both metal. So when you grind metal against metal, it physically is really hard to make minor adjustments when you're sliding these rails. Like, listen to that grind. If this was a different material, it would actually, you know, move a lot smoother. The tough thing is, is that you actually have to move these at the correct angle so it doesn't actually grind metal against metal, but it still will grind metal against metal because it is metal. So it's a little bit difficult. And I really don't like when gimbals actually have that because when you're trying to make micro adjustments on moving it left and right, and you know, sometimes when there's a little bit too much friction, and then you try and move it and you're just like, you move it too much and you're like, <sighs> It would really get annoying if, you know, after a while, but uh, it is what it is. You could just spray a little bit of solution on there if you really wanted to. But I mean, it's not too bad. Uh, another, I think, gimbal come. I think it was the Feutech. One of the larger Feutech ones. It's just, it was so annoying. It's just, it's really difficult to use because it was literally just so hard to adjust. So overall, I really commend Zhuin for actually making a gimbal like this because it can handle those bigger cameras and a lot of people are investing in you know the red komodo and the komodo x and z cams and cameras are getting bigger and people you know weirdly enough like having their smaller alpha cameras and cinema cameras to be you know rigged out so it is a cool feature that you can actually rig them out and leave them on a gimbal like this so well done, Zhu in for that. So anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. That would be amazing. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And obviously, I'll put the link in the description below if you do want to check this gimbal out. Other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.